Africa are vast areas of dense forests and swamplands as yet unexplored by white men. A virgin territory penetrated only by the great Congo River and its tributaries. Here in this wild steaming portion of the dark continent is the home of the Ponga, native name for the gorilla. It was here on the fringe of gorilla territory in a nameless native village inhabited by a tribe of fierce Negritos, an incident occurred which was destined to startle the civilized world.
Isn't there any hope for him, Doc? I'm afraid not. He's just too weak to fight jungle fever. I don't know how he managed to travel as far as he did. Do you think you can keep him alive till Sir Harry arrives? I expect him any day. I don't know, Van. I'm doing everything I can. I know you are, but... But if Sir Harry could only hear the astonishing things he said, it would mean so much. The man is delirious. You don't actually believe he saw a white girl, do you? Oh, yes, I do. The fever? No, Doc. There must be some truth behind the stories those hunters brought back from the interior. About a white girl attacking a native? Yes, sir. Probably cock. Some drunken trader probably saw it coming out of a bottle of bourbon. That's what I thought. Until Kunderson showed up. Wait till Sir Harry arrives and I'll let you in on an amazing discovery. Come in. Four. Both come. That must be Sir Harry. Keep a close watch on our patients. Right oh, but you better hurry. We haven't much time. Oh, I love excitement, Clive. 
seemed to have forgotten that I was born on a safari. However, if you'd rather return to London, I'm sure Father will understand. Sam, you know, being with you makes up for all this company. All right, come on, get that over there. Come on, let's get moving here. Good morning, Hans. Good morning, Herr von Dorn. Hans, I want you to meet the leader of our expedition, Sir Harry Bracken. I am honored, mine, Commandant. Well, thank you. I'm pleased that Van Dorn was able to engage a man with your qualifications to guide us. My daughter, Miss Tamara. How do you do? Pleasure of mine, Fräulein. My secretary, Cargo. How do you do, sir? And Baxter. Hello. Now, Hans, if you'll point out our canoes, we have to our money to board. What's in the bed of here? What's in the door? Come with me. Here's the boss man. Number one boss man. Savvy? Savvy. Me, number one porter boy. You show boss man to canoe, don't you? Follow number one porter boy. You will follow me, I will show you to your canoe. to make a gentleman. Right-o. But I'm afraid your definition of a gentleman and mine are quite different.
in through the jungle, we come to a trail over the mountain that will save us over 150 miles of water transport. By Jove, that will save a lot of time, too. Nice going, Hans. You've been over that trail before, Hans? What, sir? Now, about here, we come to a point... Shove off, my dear. Are all your things still aboard? Well, yes, Father, but, uh... But what? Well, I was wondering if I could have Bishop for my personal guard instead of Stringer. Very well. You shall have Bishop. Take care of it, Hans. Yes. I hope Stringer yes. hasn't been discourteous to you. Oh, not at all, me. Well, I've been observing the way Bishop does things, and... Well, I think he's more capable. I quite agree with you, my dear. You've been promoted, Bishop. From rear guard to personal guard for Fräulein Brandon. On whose orders? By the Fräulein. You're a fast worker, my friend. You're crazy. I haven't spoken two words to the girl. Besides, I like my present duty. Don't be too close. If you play your cards right, you've got a chance to marry a fortune. I'm satisfied. Anything you say, but you're her guard, so get aboard her through.
guard, I expect to do what I'm told. But you don't like being my personal guard, is that it? I don't like being made the ghost while you punish an ardent admirer. Mr. Carswell doesn't interest me. That's what you mean. I don't think you're capable of being interested in anything but yourself. You're very rude. And very uncouth. Also a congenital liar. Besides, I'm a positive bounder where women are concerned. Most women. Why, this is indeed a pleasure. 
for I'm quite familiar with your contributions to science. Uh, perhaps you are familiar with the works of my former colleague, Dr. Friedrich Theodor. Why, Dr. Theodor was responsible for our coming here. Or perhaps I should say his diary. Right, then. Then Gunderson got back alive. Yes. But he died of jungle fever a few days after he reached Mojave. You said the diary has brought you here. Is it your intention to search for the missing link? Yes, and we need your help. Come with me. <laughs> Sorry, I have no chairs to offer you. This is a mind to floor. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, not at all. Quite all right. My name doesn't matter. I was the anthropologist to accompany the ill-fated Deodorf expedition. Uh, uh, anyhow, Deodorf was my friend, and I stuck by him after the others had deserted, and I was a witness to his murder by the missing link. Doctor, we are very anxious to know what you have in this bag. Oh, yes. Uh, I was going to show you some photos I made. I was afraid to entrust them to Gunderson. Now, yeah. now, that is Dr. Frederick Theodore. In my opinion, one of the world's greatest anthropologists. And they are the members of the expedition with a portion of our permanent camp in Gorilla Territory. Do you suppose there's any part of their camp still standing? Hardly. After 10 years, it was a constant fight then to keep the jungle out. These photographs are priceless, Doctor. We'll guard them with our lives. Well, there are others there showing the missing link reacting to some intelligent tests we made, which you can study at your leisure. But this one shows him full grown at five years, just a few weeks before he broke out of his cage and murdered Theodore. We are deeply indebted to you, Doctor. Isn't there something we can do for you in return? Perhaps on our return, you'd like to go back to civilization with us. No, I'd rather not. My life on this earth is growing short, and my mission, if you can call it such, is about finished. Now, uh, this map will guide you to Deirdre's camp, and I'd advise you to rebuild it and use it as base of all future activities. <laughs> Otherwise, you may traverse the entire length and breadth of the Congo and never catch sight of a single gorilla. I assume from your suggestion that Dr. Theodore used some methods to lure the gorillas into his camp. <laughs> his method was quite simple. He discovered that the medium plant was a choice food for the gorilla. And so he planted it all around his camp. You find some photos of the medium in those. Here you are, Mother. If you don't want it for a commoda, you can use it for bathroom too. I don't know about that the plan, but keep the right one.
show off whenever you give the word. Well, the sooner the better. Just as I was going to recommend, my dear, these Negritos are not very friendly. The chief and his witch doctor might be planning to ambush us from the camp of the night. Continuous travel day and night to at least 50 miles from the village. Excellent suggestion, Hans. Where's Miss Pamela? She and her cars will are down by the river. Get everything ready to leave immediately. Yes, ma'am. Pam! Yes, Father? It's become necessary to shop off at once. Again, 
My enthusiasm ran away with me. <laughs> I'm glad somebody still has enthusiasm. I'm afraid I lost mine crossing that swamp. Very well, Hans. Let's camp here. Perhaps a good rest will give my morale a lift. Mohakana Dunga! got to do is plant medium all around the place and onto the cover. Yes, and pray for the white gorilla to get hungry, eh? If it works for Dr. Deodorff, it'll work for us. In spite of your skeptical I'm certainly joking. How do we know if the trap is sprung if we're inside the stockade? By means of a slight improvement by Baxter over the Deodorff model. Now, you see that there bell up there? Now, just by way of a demonstration, if you'll all step aside, we'll show you how it goes. First, we hook this in here. Now, Miss Pamela, here's your gorilla. Comes along and gets a whiff of the men job. <laughs> <laughs> so we up to the windfall to wet his appetite. <laughs> and being a greedy blinder, he eats his way right up to the trap. <laughs> Well, there's an old bunch of it out in the center. So, he steps right out there to see what he can do about it. <laughs> well, you see how it works, Miss Pamela? It looks like the Baxter invention is a blooming success. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a bit like a good <laughs> That's what I get for making a blasted monkey meat. <laughs> shillings I took from you last night? Sure, I'd like to have revenge. How about you, Bishop? Some other time. I don't feel lucky tonight. If you can cock me in hands, I might as well lose my money to you. I've no place to spend it. Good night, Miss Hamill.
You're not playing fair with me, Pam. What do you mean? Well, ever since we've been in Africa, you've been treating me like a stranger. Well, I'm afraid it's your fault, Clive. I'd rather resent you for that than that. But you know I love you. And I'm very fond of you. Well, please don't mistake my friendship for more than it was intended. Oh, I see. Let's be good friends. What do you say? Well, what can I say? Good night, Clive. Good night.
serve you. Please sit down. After you, ma'am. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Why should anyone observe the social life that is here? This is his civilization. The jungle. A man shouldn't forget to pay his respects to a charming lady even in the jungle, Miss Rex. Oh. It is only a reminder that I'm not easy. Stop addressing me as Miss Bragdon. I'm Pamela and What's going on here? Answer me, Bishop. Why didn't you strike Carswell? I'm sorry, sir. I must have lost my temper. Go on. Why don't you tell him? Why don't you tell him how I found her in your arms and you were kissing her? I resent such presumption, Bishop. You were engaged as a rifleman, not to make love to my daughter. I must have lost my head. I'm sorry, sir. You've lost my confidence and respect. If it were possible, I'd send you back to Mojave. But, Father, it was all my fault. I... I'll talk to you later. Go to your room. But, Father... Pamela, in the morning, I shall appoint a more trustworthy guard for my daughter. And if you so much as speak to her again, I'll have you put under arrest. Understand? Yes, sir. By Jove, we've captured her. Oh, I could not do a white one. I'm satisfied the trap works. That gives me hope. What are you going to do with it? Shoot it? Don't be an idiot. If we kill him, all our efforts will be wasted. We'll never have another gorilla come near the place. Baxter, put the ladder down for him. Right, sir. We'll give him a chance to get out. Talk to you, Hans. What's on your mind? Well, I'm fed up with this. I'm sick of wasting my time trying to find a white monkey. So? You tell me that you had a definite purpose in joining this expedition. Supposing I have? Well, I'd, I'd like to throw in with you if there's a chance. Without knowing my objective? Well, anything would be better than this. If you throw in with us, there can be no backing out, understand? And if we fail... You'll risk being hanged with the rest of us. Well? I'll do anything if I can take Pamela with me. Oh, I don't know about that. I hadn't figured on taking a woman along. Suppose she objects to going with you. Well, suppose the Harry objects to your plans. That isn't going to stop you, is it? You can take her, but she'll be your responsibility. All right. Good, I can tell you our plans now. I know where there's a fabulous gold field. And by borrowing Herr Bragdon's safari, we can bring out enough of the shiny metal to make us richer than the Bank of England. I'm with you all the way. Come with me. This is an outrage. I shall spend every penny I possess to prosecute you, Colonel. Out an awful map, you then, Sir Harry. It's best to bargain with the blighters. Carswell, I would never have thought you'd be an accessory to this criminal venture. You must be mad. Shut up. Tie them up. Mumbo Jumbo. Maraco Zumba. Malaganga. Get 
My friends, we are taking all the guns and supplies with us. But if you make no attempt to follow, we will leave a cache on the riverbank a two-day trek from here. With care, it will be sufficient to get you back to Mojave. But if you attempt to follow, we will leave nothing. Come on, Pam, you're coming with us. Oh, no, I'm not. How dare you, you insolent young bounder. Don't be a fool, Carswell. Your horse going to get your blue and neck scratched. You coming, Pam? No, I'm not. All right, Mumbo Jumbo. Bring the Fräulein with us. What man said, come you? Don't you dare touch me. Baraka has to go now. Take a look at the back of the suit. Baraka has to go now. Baraka has to go now. Where is the place we are? Going, Bish, old boy. Now, if we only had some guns, we could take off to the blinders and turn the tables on them. If we only had some cartridges. Perhaps we'll soon have both. Sure, Kruger is going to leave them for us on the riverbank. You didn't really believe that, did you? Didn't you? My dear fellow, Kruger can't possibly afford for us to get out of here alive. Do you really mean he is cold-blooded enough to leave us stranded without food or guns? It wouldn't be the first time, Van Doren. You seem to know quite a bit about her, Kruger. It's part of my job. I'm afraid I'm not quite what I seem. You see, I joined your safari under orders from the Rhodesian Secret Service. About 18 months ago, the bodies of a party of prospectors were found in the bush, each man shot through the head. We discovered they had hired a guide. The guide's body wasn't there. I can only tell you, gentlemen, that the description of the guide fits Kroger very well. Further, it was established there were two other members of the original party, riflemen, hired by the same guide. Their bodies weren't there either. We've been stringer very possible. Yes, but what are we going to do for guns and supplies? I've taken care of that. Bishop, I owe you an apology. There isn't time for that now. Every minute that Pamela's with Kruger, she's in danger. If you'll take command, we'll follow you. Good enough. Come on.
All aboard. But you promised to leave food and guns on the bank for Father and the others. I've changed my mind, Fräulein. But you've got to. If you don't, they'll starve to death. It's either their lives or mine, Fräulein, and I believe in self-preservation. Clive, you can't let him do this. It's the same as murder. She's right. It would be murder. You've got to give them a fighting chance. Shut up. I don't want any advice from you. I'll ask for it. I'll get aboard, both of you. Come! of a jungle beast, and Krugat cries for help, and was dragged and screaming. We finally found him. Krugat had been killed by a huge gorilla who was holding Miss Bragdon in his arms, and he was a white gorilla.
Like some lions on Corbett's Friday doing that. Yes. Come on, everybody! Come on, everybody! Come on, Gorilla tracks. From now on, we'll have to be careful not to overlook any sign. We'll probably find lots of those tracks, but the deeper ones we'll have to follow. The white gorilla was carrying over 100 pounds of extra weight. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 